Now that we have the pre-conformed timeline, we're ready to send it off to Resolve via an XML. We'll create an XML by going to File, Export, then XML. We'll leave the settings at their default and just click OK. Now we have an XML that we should easily be able to import into Resolve. Just as an FYI, before we move on, Premiere does allow us to export Final Cut XMLs and Final Cut 10 also allows us to export XMLs but in their new flavor of XML. But regardless of the application, we can still do the same pre-conforming. Now in Resolve, we'll go directly to the Conform page. To import our newly created XML, we'll right-click under the Timeline section, find our XML, and click Open. I'll leave the options at their default, and then click OK. And bon appetit! We didn't get any error messages in this case, and our media relinked just fine. But if we did get any errors, then we could troubleshoot in a couple different ways. Depending on the error message, we may be able to fix the problem by going back to the project file, make the necessary changes, and export a new XML. Or if that doesn't work, we can use the editing tools in the conform page to make the necessary changes to match with our offline. Speaking of which, let me bring that up. Going to the media page, I'll locate the self-contained reference video that we saved earlier. Right-click on it and choose Add as Offline Clip. Then coming back to the conform page, we'll call up the offline clip by right-clicking on the timeline and choosing Link with Offline Clip. Next, all we need to do is change the source mode to offline in the viewer window, and then drag the playhead around to make sure that we have a perfect match. OK, now we're ready to grade. Once color grading is complete, we're ready to round trip back to our editing application. The reason we're doing this is so that we can deliver the project back to the client in the same form we received it, only this time the graded version will link to the graded files. So we'll first need to render it out and then create a brand new XML from within Resolve that will reference the graded files. From the Deliver page, we'll choose Final Cut Pro XML Round Trip under the Easy Setup and then choose the destination. I always make sure to create a special folder for my rendered files. In this case, I've created a folder called Renders. I'll pick it and then click OK. It's also a really good idea to add frame handles. What this simply means is that we can add some pre-roll and post-roll to each clip for convenience to the client. That way, if they decide to do a little bit more editorial or make a complete new edit, they'll have those extra frames of pre-roll and post-roll to assist them with their editing. I'll just add 12 frame handles, but you can choose any amount that you'd like. Then click Add Job, and then Start Render. Once the rendering is complete, we can now create a new XML from Resolve that will reference the graded files. To do this, we'll go to the Conform page, then right-click on our timeline and choose Export AAF EDL XML. We can give it a new name, or stick with the one that we've got, then click Save. With the new XML, we can now round trip back to our editing application for finishing and delivery. Toggling over to Final Cut, I will import the XML from Resolve by going to File, Import, then XML. We'll find the XML we've just created, which we can see here with Resolve in parentheses, and then click Choose. Just as an FYI, it's the same procedure for importing XMLs as it is in Premiere and in Final Cut 10. The XML from Resolve is now imported and we've successfully round tripped our project with the rendered grades being referenced by the new XML. The big advantages with round tripping are that finishing effects such as titling and composite effects can be easily reapplied and further editorial changes can be made if the client wishes. If there were any custom effects, we can jump back to the original sequence, copy the clip with the effect we want, and then paste the effect on the graded clip by right-clicking and choosing Paste Attributes. And perhaps the biggest advantage to round tripping is if we need to make any additional grading changes, we can jump back to Resolve, make a correction, go back to the Deliver page, set it to render out just that clip, add Job, Start Render, toggle back to Final Cut, and voila! The project automatically refreshes with the updated change. 
Once the project is complete and we've gotten final client approval, then we can deliver the graded project back to the client in the same way that we received it in media managed form. In conclusion, where possible, I suggest that you try to get the project from the client in a media managed form. That way, as the colorist, you can pre-conform the timeline before you send it off to resolve. And then once the project is graded, you can round trip back to the editor for finishing and delivery. Round tripping is a really powerful strategy that you and your client will love. Thank you for watching.